G'day YouTube, it's Turbo Tristan here, and in today's video, we're gonna do some tidy up mods to Nafraz's EK4. By the time this video comes out, you will have seen the full feature on Nafraz's car, but now it's time to tidy it up, so stay tuned, and you'll see what we're gonna do. So what we're gonna do today is we're going to stiffen up the chassis and also replace some very old very worn bushes that are 22 years old so we're going to swap those out with some hard race um, front lower control arms and a new set of engine mounts with the torque mounts these are hard race items they were supplied by elusive racing in springvale so we're going to get under the car have a look here and see what we need to do to swap those out uh, we'll probably look at doing some tidy up mods we'll try and get some Wrinkle paint on this, make it look as fresh as that. We've got Naf here, he's helping us out. What's going on guys? So uh, I'll put him to work and get him on the wire brush and clean that up. I'll get under the car and get dirty. Original stock one is out. It's just a matter of undoing this ball joint here, smacking that pretty hard with a hammer, undoing where the suspension goes, or if you have coilovers, just undoing the bottom bolt there, disconnecting the sway bar, that requires an Allen key to go in the end, and then a 14 mil there. And then there's uh, three 19 mils at the back, and a 17 mil just there. It's a little bit tricky with the sump here on the B series, it kind of gets in the way. Came out with not too much drama. I was a little bit worried the ball joint, but just a bit of a whack and it came off. You should be able to do this in your driveway. Let's go and take a look at the original ones now. So here we have the stock arm versus the hard race arm now the reason why we're changing is because these bushes here if you look deep down inside uh, there's some cracks around there so only minor most people probably wouldn't worry about changing those but because you've got to get a roadworthy uh, certificate here in Victoria they make you change all your bushes and make sure everything is perfect before they let it be registered on the road now to compare that to the hard race ones, we've got all new bushes, uh, very, very high quality, really, really good, good quality there, and a brand new bush here for the back. Everything else looks exactly the same. It's always a good idea to check everything lines up, and it looks like it does. So we can go ahead and reinstall that now, and I'll show you how we do that. on it was a little bit of a struggle to do on the ground I've just got to put the split pin in down here tighten up that bolt which I need to do with my ratchet uh, because the rattle gun won't get in there but everything else is all tightened down and I've just got to tighten up the sway bar but there she is all in hard race brand new bushes and you can get those from elusive racing in Springvale so just replacing the driver's side engine mount now uh, it's just a matter of undoing the two bolts over the back, one on the top, that's your bracket, and then there's three bolts around the sides which hold the mount in place. So I'm going to take those out now, replace it with a new hard race one. So here we have the factory original passenger side top engine mount. Uh, the reason why we're replacing it is because of that crack there, 
it's not all the way through the car doesn't vibrate or rattle when you drive it you can't feel the engine moving or knocking but this is the replacement the hard race one it's much lighter um, there's nothing overly hardcore about it um, but this is the brand now that everyone's going to so stick it in and see how long it lasts all right so just installing this is the reverse of taking it out uh, i always clean up all the dust and dirt and everything between the chassis and the new mount because we don't want that to wear away any paint this guy goes down here just a tip for those playing at home the power steering reservoir sits in there you can just lift it out and move it to the side to get better access so to get that one down there was a bit of a pain in the ass i will just stick this back in now that just clicks in take this bracket drop that over there and then we're going to put all these bad boys back on and for this one we use the ugga duggers job's done on that side so we also need to replace the torque mount so I'm going to do that now put you on tripod and that's a 19 there and these ones are now 14 so 19 and a 14 thought that wasn't gonna come for a second Now this one should come out if I drop the engine down a bit. Is it just me or is it this hole here and this hole here aren't the same? I don't understand. There needs to be like a bush or a sleeve or something on that. Anyway, let's replace them. These ones are pretty floppy anyway. And this is the hard race one, a lot harder to move and wiggle. So we'll just put that on there, like so. So now the threads are started, we'll just whip these up. This guy, which goes on like so, and then the 19 mil. Done. So to get to the other engine mount, you need to take out the air box. Now it's a shame it's not already roadworthy, otherwise we'd be probably removing this to fit the turbo kit, but it does have to go back on. For now, so here's the hard race mount. We need to remove this one. I'm not sure whether I'm going to take the whole thing out, but what I'm going to do is put the jack under the gearbox so it doesn't go anywhere. There's a bolt down here, which is really hard to get to, one here. This pin's got to come out, and this is the bracket that holds it on. So let's sit that aside. Boom. Deep 17. That's that part out, gone. So 17 on a ratchet, fun times. And I knew there was one I forgot underneath here. What a pain. 
So here's the old engine mount again. It's pretty cracked, it's pretty worn. It is 20 years old. It looks like the genuine original one. Uh, again, I probably wouldn't replace that, but that's what Roadworthy needs. So that's what Roadworthy gets. So we've just removed the torque mount from the driver's side or the right hand side, depending on which country you're in. So this one, you can see it's split all the way through. We're gonna swap that out with a hard race one. Here we go, brand new, so should pass, no dramas. All right, so it's a bit of a mission. We got the hard race front lower control arms on. We've got the two engine mounts on the side on. We've got the two torque mount uh, brackets on. The only one I haven't done is the rear engine mount. Not sure how you're supposed to do that without removing everything from there or everything from underneath, but let's take a look at the control arms. So there they are there, all on. Hard race, hard race, yee-haw. So otherwise stock suspension, got the new engine mount on there. And the other one you can't really see because it's underneath the airbox. So not really doing mods today, purely because the car needs to get roadworthy before it can be transferred into NAF's name. Um, now, we did have a bit of an explosion today, something failed. We were trying to do the wrinkle blue rocker cover, just like my engine. His engine was all flaked away and original. The paint can, I did a, a quick pass around the base, and then I started to do along the top. And as you can see, we ran out of paint, which sucks, it's VHT paint. It's the expensive one, I, I suppose you would say. Proper wrinkle. Uh, the paint can still about 80% full, just died, ran out of gas, ran out of pressure, whatever it was. And then I thought, well, I've got a black can of wrinkle. What if I blended it in and made some kind of crazy effect to see what would happen and what it would look like just to do something different? And that can actually exploded. The top nozzle popped off I don't even know why I just took the cap off and it went everywhere and yeah game over so I don't know what Naf wants to do he's due back any minute but I've got to put the car back together all his spark plugs were the worst ones I've ever seen I've given him a clean and put them back in uh, just waiting to see if he brings any spark plugs back with him there was also some weird plastic ring stuck on one of the top of the plugs I couldn't get it off so I had to stick a pick down and pull that out but we're slowly tidying this up, getting it ready to do a turbo conversion. We've painted these rusty brackets just with some plain satin black, nothing fancy, but it that already looks a lot better. Okay, so we had no choice but to put it back together how it was. We couldn't find paint locally, so we'll have to get some wrinkle blue. But there it is. I'm not happy with it. Um, as you can see, I only got a coat just around the base and then the can just exploded and started spraying out here. So it hasn't wrinkled up. It probably will once uh, Naf drives the car a bit. Normally I would bake that and it would look awesome. We'll probably have to strip it off again when we do the turbo conversion and paint it properly. But yeah, she's all back together and it'll drive out of here better than when it came in. So that brings us to the end of another video. I hope you liked it. A little bit boring, but for those of you who are looking to do engine mounts, lower control arms, a little bit of a how-to, not super in-depth because it's really just a matter of unbolting and removing and replacing. It's a nice simple one, but maybe if you guys were thinking about getting some hard race arms, you wanted to see what they look like, how they go on, how they work, now you know. So I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one.